This is Calvin. He his favorite color is red, and he likes video games. This is.
Good morning, everyone. Boy, it's early. (laughs) Welcome to you. Welcome to those of you worshiping from home and those of you who forgot to set your clocks back an hour or forward an hour. Um, Welcome. My name is Pastor Randy Schrader. Welcome to a service at our Savior Lutheran Church in beautiful West Lafayette, Indiana. Pastor Kristen Rice um, wishes her best for us. She is preaching at Gloria Day in Mulberry this morning, supply preaching for them. Um, So you're stuck with me. Um, Just a reminder for those in our uh, sanctuary to sign the pew pads. We have record of you worshiping with us today. Um, Those viewing, would you please write something in the comments? It would be greatly appreciated. If you are in need of a QR code that is on our screen right now, you can scan that and get a copy of our bulletin. Um, Those of you here already have one. And then um, an invitation for today. As we hear our scripture and as we worship, have you ever found peace or healing in something unexpected? Have you ever found healing or peace in something unexpected? What was it? And how did it change you? I'll invite you to stand as you are willing so we can begin our worship with a call to worship. People of God, we gather for worship to practice joy, not because our lives are perfect, but because joy is resilient. God's gift for every season and the wellspring at the heart of our faith. When our sins feel heavy, we We practice practice joy. When floods rise and fall, we we practice practice joy. When hope surprises us, we we practice practice joy. When God sets people free, we we practice practice joy. When Jesus heals us, we we practice practice joy. When we are called, we we practice practice joy. When we endure, we we practice practice joy. We practice joy together, and And God God is is with us. People of God, the merciful one already knows everything we confess. By naming our sins and hearing words of forgiveness, we are drawn deeper into relationship with God and one another. Let's bring before God what we have done and what we have failed to do, trusting that we will receive the joy of being forgiven. God of abundant goodness, we have hurt those we love, those far from us, ourselves, and your creation, by what we do and by what we neglect. We cling to disappointments, judgments, and failures, and refuse to enjoy what you give. We are too content with injustice, violence, and hardship plague our neighbors. We ignore the gift of your presence in times both tragic and trying. Forgive us for what we have done and what we have failed to do. Pour out on us the joy of your presence and heal what we have harmed. Friends, receive these joyful words. You are entirely and completely forgiven of all your sins. You are entirely and completely welcomed as God's beloved child. You are released to live out God's love in a world that needs such joy. Amen. Amen. Let us sing together our gathering hymn, Light Up Your Heads.
of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace for the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Let us pray. God of impossible things, you teach us where healing is found, in clarity and honesty, in the cross. You made us for goodness, not harm, and laid a path toward renewal. Show us joy in the heart of despair. Heal us to be healers in your wounded world. Amen. Amen. Please be seated as we hear our word for the day. A reading from the book of Numbers. From Mount Hor, the Israelites set out by the way to the Red Sea to go around the land of Edom. But the people became impatient on the way. The people spoke against God and against Moses. Why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no food and no water, and we detest this miserable food. Then the Lord sent poisonous serpents among the people, and they bit the people so that many Israelites died. The people came to Moses and said, We have sinned by speaking against the Lord and against you. Pray to the Lord to take away the serpents from us. So Moses prayed for the people. And the Lord said to Moses, Make a poisonous serpent and set it on a pole, and everyone who is bitten shall look at it and live. So Moses made a serpent of bronze and put it upon a pole. And whenever a serpent bit someone, that person would look at the serpent of bronze and live. The word of the Lord. Please join me in reading responsibly by whole verse, Psalm 107. Give thanks to the Lord, for the Lord is good, for God's mercy endures forever. Gathering them in from the lands, from the east and from the west, from the north and from the south. Some were fools and took rebellious acts. Through their sins they were afflicted. 
They loathed all manner of food and drew near to death's door. Then in their trouble they cried to the Lord and you delivered them from their distress. You sent forth your word and healed them and rescued them from the grave. Let them give thanks to you, Lord, for your steadfast love and your wonderful works for all people. Let them offer sacrifices of thanksgiving and tell you of your deeds with shouts of joy. A reading from the book of Ephesians. You were dead through the trespasses and sins in which you once lived, following the course of this world, following the ruler of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work among those who are disobedient. All of us once lived among them in the passions of our flesh, following the desires of flesh and senses. And we were by nature children of wrath, like everyone else. But God, who is rich in mercy, out of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead through our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved and raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, so that in the ages to come, he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace in kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. For by grace, you have been saved through faith. And this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not the result of works, so that no one may boast. For we are what he has made us, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand to be our way of life. The word of the Lord. Gospel according to John, the third chapter. Glory, Glory to you, o Lord. Lord. Jesus said, Just as Moses lifted, lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Those who believe in him are not condemned, but those who do not believe are condemned already, for they have not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment. That light has come into the world, and people loved darkness rather than the light, because their deeds were evil. For all who do evil hate the light and do not come to the light, so that their deeds may not be exposed. But those who do what is true come to the light, so that it may be clearly seen that their deeds have been done in God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated, and I'll invite any of the, those young and young at heart to come on up for a children's message. Good morning, good morning, good morning. So if you remember last week, we heard that the Israelites, um, God's people, got the Ten Commandments. Do you remember that, talking about the Ten Commandments at all, those rules that we got? Okay. And now, the same people are walking on this long journey, and they're getting kind of cranky, right? 
the food that they have isn't the best, but it is food. They have to work for their water, and they keep on asking God, why are you bringing us out to this wilderness? And then all of a sudden, Michael, can you give me that first slide? All of a sudden, these snakes start appearing. What's up with this? And they bite people, and then they get sick. What's going on? And they even complain about that to, to God and say, oh, no, maybe we need something, something else. Maybe, maybe we need something else from God. Sh show ahead, go ahead and go to the next slide. And then this kind of weird thing, Moses prays to God, and then God says, well, then put a serpent on a stick and lift it up. And everybody who sees that, and after they've been bitten, will be saved. Kind of crazy stuff, isn't it? It makes you wonder what God is doing, what's going on. But have you ever noticed that there's certain things that might not be pleasant, but yet they help us out? Have you ever noticed that? God can sometimes use things that might harm us to make us better. Can you think of anything like that? Do you guys ever take medicine? Does it always taste really good? We used to get that red stuff, that syrupy stuff when I was a kid. That was like the worst stuff, but it helped us stop coughing. Sometimes the things that we don't think are great sometimes can help us, right? So sometimes that happens in our lives. Have you guys ever had to move before? Tell you what, when I moved to seminary, yeah? Not really. Just, baby. No, just when you were a little, little, so you don't really remember it. So when I went to seminary, we lost all of our friends because we didn't see them anymore. But the good thing is, we made new friends. And we still talk to our old friends and the new friends that we made, even after we moved again. We have even more friends now because we had to move out away from our home the first time. God is with us through all of that. God doesn't cause bad things to happen, but yet God can always use the bad things that happen to us to help us out in the future. It always makes us kind of wonder why we are going through certain things that might be difficult, but always remember that God's with us and God will bring us out to the other side. Let us pray. Good and gracious God, we thank you for all your love given to us, for never leaving us alone, for always being with us to make it through even the most trying times. Help us to be the love and kindness to others as you are to us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you for coming up. Please grab a piece of candy for yourself and one for, to share with someone on the way back. There you go. Grace, mercy, and peace from our Creator, our Savior, and our Sustainer, now and always. So today we enter our fourth Sunday in Lent, and within the theme of the seed of joy from Barnegie's worship, we are exploring transformative joy. And to begin, I want you to think about a transformative time in your life, whether it was joyful or not. Where were you? How old were you? What were you going through at that time? What were the circumstances of that transformative time? Who were those around you during that time? Who were those who walked with you in that transformative time? Was that time of transformation the time when things were falling into place? Or was it a challenging time? You know, either could be true, or like most Lutherans believe, both could be true at the same time. Take just a few moments to ponder a transformative time of your life.
as I recall my more transformative periods, they seem to have been more challenging. They usually require some cost, either voluntarily or reluctantly. Sometimes they were downright painful and demanded a cost to make it through. And I guess it goes without saying, not all transformative times are joyful, especially when we are experiencing them. That is what the Israelites were facing in the text we heard from the book of Numbers as our first reading. The Israelites become impatient along the way, along their journey. I I can relate. They speak against God and against Moses, asking, Why have you brought us out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there's no food, no water, and we detest this miserable food. There was hardship, to be certain. And it's difficult to be patient in times of hardship. It's only been a couple years seems weird to say that, since the world went through the hardship of the pandemic. It was difficult, to say the least, to be patient in getting through COVID. And if you're anything like me, you began to question all leadership and God, asking why. Now, please hear me when I say that God did not send us COVID. As, especially as we heard this in the scripture this morning that God sent poisonous serpents Among the people. I don't believe God smites us with such things. But experiencing such catastrophe might be the reason that Moses, the author of Numbers, would blame God for the poisonous serpents. As we think about the challenges of the pandemic, the challenges were more than just COVID, right? Misinformation about the origins of the pandemic led to questioning and mistrust of one another. Some folks don't even believe yet in the vaccine's validity. And though we have come out on the other side of COVID, our nation seems to find themselves even more polarized than before. So if we compare the the years in the wilderness of the Israelites to our journey through the COVID, the poisonous snakes of the Israelites could represent the poisonous polarization of our society today. The world has been transformed. Our country, we ourselves, have been transformed by the pandemic. The, and mostly not in a positive, joyful way. But that does not have the final word. God always has the final word. Better yet, God's love has the final word, and that brings about transformative joy. You might ponder when, you might ponder why, when answering Moses' prayer for the people, God tells Moses to make a bronze serpent and set it on a pole for those who were bitten to look upon it and live. We just heard last week, in the listing of the Ten Commandments, that the Israelites should not make idols. The Reverend Leanna Clark from Barngeese Worship makes an interesting point when she writes, This episode of Israelites' wilderness journey demonstrates how puzzling and intriguing the Bible can be sometimes. It invites the reader to pause and reflect. Why would God advise the very same people who were inclined toward golden calves to make a bronze serpent, put it on a pole, and look at it for healing. God runs the risk of accidental idol worship because of a more urgent need and a deeper truth. God has the power to turn the thing that kills us into the thing that can save us. Nothing is beyond God's power to transform and redeem. Sometimes, against all reasoning, joy comes from the thing that would have destroyed us. Through the Bible, attributes, though the Bible attributes the origin of the venomous serpents to God, they can also be understood as the natural consequences of human sin, our ego, and our brokenness. 
When we spend too long worshiping our own wisdom, we start poisoning ourselves and harming the vulnerable in our communities. In Numbers, the antidote to the lethal venom is administered via a visual connection to the bronze serpent. The people must confront the cause of their own suffering, their deadly and complicated past. For Christians, the obvious biblical parallel to Moses' bronze serpent is the cross. As we heard in today's gospel text from John 3, Jesus references the healing serpent in Numbers 21. Throughout John's gospel, Jesus speaks about being raised up as his ultimate goal for the healing of the world. At his death, his final words, it is finished, indicate the centrality of his own crucifixion. What is essential for Christianity is that resurrection, new life, renewal, it only happens through death. God uses death to bring about transformative joy. God enters death through the Son to save us all. God has the power to turn the thing that kills us into the thing that can save us. We may no longer be aware of how shocking it was for the early church to use the cross as evidence of God's saving power. After all, crucifixion was a brutal, horrifying execution reserved for the worst criminals. Imagine if Jesus had not died by crucifixion, but rather by electric chair or lethal injection or firing squad. What would symbolize our salvation? As they offer healing, the bronze serpent and the cross retain their original forms, displaying the agent of death for all to see. In order for healing and new life to be transformative, not temporary bandages over wounds that will not heal, those who seek healing must confront the truth. In South Africa, the truth and reconciliation movement demonstrated that reconciliation is not possible without first telling the truth about the horrors of the apartheid. On the other hand, legislation in parts of the United States attempt to restrict instruction about the brutality of slavery and the ongoing far-reaching consequences of racism as the nation as the nation struggles to come to terms with its own accountability. The serpent and the cross resist a sanitized view of history. They point us to our future by pointing us to our past. It's an honest look at our past. So you might ask, where's the joy? Well, joy lies in the sharp contrast between death and resurrection. Sin and forgiveness, sickness and healing. Today's psalm encourages God's redeemed people to offer praise because they have been redeemed from the sinful ways that sickened them. When in their trouble, they cried to the Lord and you delivered them from their distress. You set forth your word and healed them and rescued them from the grave. Let them give thanks to you, Lord, for your steadfast love and your wonderful works for all people. Let them offer sacrifices of thanksgiving and tell of your deeds with shouts of joy. The redemption, the turning point, is the wellspring of transformative joy. The same source bubbles between the lines of John Newton's famous Amazing Grace, I once was lost, but now I am found. God notices the harm that we do to ourselves and others with our own sin, but not because God requires our perfection. Instead, God has the perception of a skilled diagnostician. The effects of our sin ripple outward from us, draining joy and threatening the well-being of God's people and all of creation. 
Consider the Israelites in the wilderness whose children, for example, were also sickened by snake bites. The, the children were not responsible, but they suffered anyway. God seeks the extent of our sin, recognizes its harm, and reminds us of it in order to treat us like an oncologist who ensures the margins are clear when removing a tumor. Sin may be original to our human condition, but it is not the essential feature of our humanity. God has the last word. We heard in Ephesians 2, you were dead through the trespasses of sin, but God, who is rich in mercy, out of the great love with which God loves us, even when we were dead through our trespasses, made us alive in Christ Jesus. By grace you have been saved and raised up with God and seated with God in the heavenly places in Jesus Christ, so that in the ages to come, God might show the immeasurable riches of God's grace and kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. And then in Ephesians verse 10, it reminds us, For we are what God has made us, created, created in Jesus Christ for good works. We are not created for harm. Healing holds the source of transformative joy, expanding all the possible features before us. God notices us, and God cares. Jesus, our physician, knows what it's like to be dying under the weight of sin. He heals us to heal others, to set others free. We are created in Jesus Christ for good works. Always, we are called to keep the terrifying, wondrous, joyful truth before us. We were dead. We had killed others. But we weren't beyond God's power to redeem. Neither is anything else in all of creation. God's transformative joy lives in us as we continue to tell the truth and work for justice for all. For God notices each and every one of us, and God loves, God cares for us. That is transformative joy. Thanks be to God. Now I will invite you, as you are willing, to stand and help us sing, Restore in us, O God. Please join me as we profess our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. 
We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, was suffered death, and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. God of mercy and grace, you are present. You are within each person here, and you are among us as your gathered people. Trusting in your presence, your promises, and your joy, even when we cannot perceive them, we bring to you our gratitude for all you have done and the burdens that weigh in our hearts. We pay, pray for creation. Thank you for its beauty and bounty and for the ways it reminds us of your presence. Guide the work of those who advocate for the wellness of your wondrous creation and help us to better tend and keep it. We pray for all habitats, creatures, and all those who are threatened by storm or flood in the northeastern and southern United States. We also pray for relief and recovery following wildfires in Texas and Minnesota. God of unending joy, answer us. We pray for the nations and their leaders. We pray in thanksgiving for the gifts and leadership of women across history and across disciplines. Thank you for cooperation among world leaders and for the ways people work together for the well being of everyone. Pour out your spirit of wisdom on all who govern that they will care for the most vulnerable. May they provide safety, compassion, and welcome for refugees, asylum seekers, and all migrants as they work for the good of those they vowed to serve. And we lift to you Muslim communities preparing to enter the holy month of Ramadan. God of in, in unending joy. Yes. We pray for peace throughout the earth. Thank you for the gift of peace. We pray that you send peace with power into our world, our neighborhoods, our hearts, and our homes. We pray for places that know violence, famine, and economic hardship, especially Palestine and Israel, where we ask for ceasefires and for safe return of hostages in Syria, Myanmar, Russia, Ukraine, and Sudan. Give peace to every nation. Stop cycles of domestic abuse. We pray for all victims of gun violence and their families. We lift to you those victims of the fatal plane crash in West Nashville, Tennessee, and their families. God of unending joy. Answer us. We pray for the church. Thank you for the goodness we know when we gather as your people for the gifts of community, shared ministry, and the chance to pray for and with one another. We thank you for the work of the church around the world, such as the ELCA Young Adults in Global Mission, and for the ways in which the church is at work close to home through Lutheran Outdoor Ministries, Indiana Kentucky Synod. 
renew us in the promises of baptism, and draw us into closer relationships with other people of faith. God of unending joy, and us. we pray for healing and wholeness. We give thanks for medical professionals, researchers, and scientists. Give them strength, wisdom, and patience. We turn to you, eternal healer, to send compassionate helpers to any who suffer or those who are, in, are ill, especially Lynn, Lawrence, Nathan, and Haley, Jeanette, Sheila, Suzanne, Jean, Megan, and the family and friends of Linnea Iantria, a former member of this congregation. God of unending joy. Answer us. God of abundant life, you bring a quiet, constant joy to our most trying times. Remind us of your goodness in grief and your presence in pain. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ is with you always. Please take a moment and share that peace among yourselves with one another as you feel comfortable. Peace to you who have joined us online. Thank you for being here. Peace be with us. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. As you finish up, you may be seated. For those of you in from other places, it's a good time to go ahead and gather your um, bread and wine or juice, whatever it is that you might have close by for our celebration of this meal. A uh, word of thank you to all of you for all that you continue to do for our Savior Lutheran Church as well as Purdue Lutheran Ministries that enables us to be the hands and feet of Christ in our area and to share God's love with other people. There's a QR code on the screen and also um, you can drop off um, your offering envelopes to the office or even mail them in, whatever is best for you. We are grateful for all that you do, all that you continue to do. Um, in service to the church in the ways that you choose to do that. As we um, commune this morning, I will commune the assistants, and then there will be a time for um, those at home to commune, as well as anyone who would like to commune in the pews, and then we'll invite everyone up at, the, um, at that time. There's grape juice in the inner circle of each tray. There's also gluten-free wafers if you prefer that. Just let us know as you um, come forward. And now we will continue with our offering prayer. We please stand as you are able. God of mercy and grace, you give us so much. Our days, our loved ones, our passions and talents, the food we eat, the homes we know, a place to worship. God, you pour out an abundance of goodness. Receive the gifts we offer back to you today. Bless them and bless us, that we will give generously, love boldly, and share widely, our offering reflecting your joyful gift. Amen. God is with you. Rejoice with full hearts and offer them to God. Let us give thanks to our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. God, there is no time, no place where you are not present. And there is no time, no place where we should not practice the joy of praising you, even here, even now, in our ordinary lives. As we give thanks, we join the choir of our ancestors and our heirs and all God's angels as they time their breath to the rhythm of joy and sing of heaven despite the world. Blessed is he who comes in the name. 
our ancestors knew the long road towards joy. Noah saw your rainbow after a devastating flood. Sarah and Abraham found hope in their future in a covenant promise. Moses cradled your law in his arms, and the Israelites found wilderness life where they should have died. The prophets read your, faithful, your faithfulness, traced indelibly on their hearts. Your love sent us Jesus, and his persistent, irrational joy, dripping with the Jordan's baptismal flood, teaching in the crowd's beating heart, tossing the tables of empire and prophet, falling like a seed into warm, dark soil as he offered his life for us all. On the last night of his life, as evening fell, Jesus sat down to dinner with his friends. He took the bread, he gave thanks, and he broke it, and he passed it out around the table for everyone to eat, saying, This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the meal had ended, he the shadows closing in, Jesus took the cup, blessed it, and invited everyone to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. In the heart of fear and pain, God plants the seed of our joy. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Send your spirit upon this bread and cup. Christ's body and blood, the food that gives us the strength to persist until joy appears. Send your spirit upon us and fortify us to be your body as well. A wellspring, a hope for a world in need. All glory, power, and honor are yours, God of brilliant resurrection and quiet joy, today and every day. Amen. Amen. Let us sing together our Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven, give us this day our daily bread, forgive us our come to this table which now extends into our homes. You who have faith and you who would like to have faith. You who have been here often and you who have not been here for a long time. You who have tried to follow Jesus and you who have failed like the rest of us. Come. It is Christ who invites us to meet him here. You may be seated. This is the body of Christ broken for you. This is the body of Christ broken for you. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. This is the blood of Christ shed for you.
Now, those in the pews who would like to commune and those of you at home, please prepare the bread. This is the body of Christ broken for you. Now, the wine or the juice, this is the blood of Christ shed for you. And now we'll invite everyone. Please stand as you are willing. Receive this blessing, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the gift of his body and blood, strength and keep and unite us now and forever. Amen. Amen. Generous God, at this table we have tasted your immeasurable grace. As grains of wheat are gathered into one bread, now make us one loaf to feed the world. In the name of Jesus, the bread of life. Amen. As we enter into our week, an invitation, more questions. How can truth telling be a joyful act and not just an embarrassing or a painful one? Surrounded in God's joy, where is the joy in the act of confession? How can truth telling be a joyful act, not just an embarrassing or painful one? And now let us join our voices together as we sing, Jesus, keep me near the cross.
final blessing. Go with blessing. The one who wove joy throughout the whole cosmos, weaves joy within your own heart. The one who experienced all our human joys and sorrows travels right beside you. And the one who whispers joy to our hearts is present within you. You are blessed in the name of God, holy three in one. Amen. Practice joy as you leave this place. Go with joy that transforms. Thanks be to God. You may be seated for some announcements if you're able to stick around. Those of you viewing on Facebook, this concludes our worship today. Those of you on Zoom, please stick around for those announcements as well.